Welcome to Craft and Geek Podcast, the podcast about making geek life and cosplay. And I said those in the wrong order, but I don't know if anybody really cares. Do you think anybody cares, Jackie? I wasn't even listening to you. I don't even know what you said. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's a perfect way to start this episode. <laughs> I was just like, bunny, me, mommy, mama, ma. That's what I heard. So, so sounded great. So, Jackie and I were discussing topics for this episode, and social media came up. And we think that yeah. we want to kind of tackle that a little bit. What do you think about yeah. that, Jackie? I like that. I think it's time to talk about some, you know, some stuff and things. And, you know, it's there's so many platforms to talk about stuff on, including this one. Hi, this is my friend, TNT Cosplay Supply. Who are oh, you that wearing, was, Eric? That was totally subtle. No. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm wearing Evil Ted so today. Far. I'm wearing Evil Ted if, for the cameras. If you can't see it, you're not watching this on. If you're oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Those of you that are listening are probably like, what is she doing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This, I'm Jackie, wearing a TNT Cosplay supply shirt. Yeah, TNT Cosplay is a friend of the show. Shout out to them. Um, yeah. They don't. We're not sponsored by anybody, but we no. just love their product. So we're just gonna talk. We're just gonna be like, yeah. "Hey, these are our friends." And yeah. I learned about them from Evil Ted, so it's now, like a sister now, brother. Show. I will say though, if there's anybody out there that wants to sponsor our show, please contact one of us. So we, and I will do. I'll do the ads for you with my <laughs> best radio voice ever, <laughs> Jackie and her radio voice. Okay, time to get serious. So, social media. When when was the first time you decided, hey, maybe I should have. Uh, like a Facebook page that's about me as a cosplayer and crafter and not just like a personal thing. So like it's always really cringy to talk about social media. Everybody always feels, you know, Oh, it's so cringy talking about myself and social media, but I like the separation of like, you know, like my, my friends I went to high school with my sorority sisters, they're babies, they're 17, you know, nieces and nephews, (laughs) baptisms and stuff. Like I just, it's not, you know, I like to have it separate. So I thought like, this is um, people I can't post on my normal day to day Facebook and be like, hey, uh, I need this kind of adhesive for this. And they don't, <laughs> people do not care. they're like, oh, man, just tie the tie a string to it. Put it to the thing. Just slam it. The tooth will come out. Don't worry. What? <laughs> like these things are not what I'm interested in. No offense to life. Life is great. And giving life and having life and taking care of little living tiny humans is wonderful. But my cosplay world, I needed the, I needed a community. Like as soon as I started crafting, I realized like I need people. I need my people. Where are they? Well, definitely, so I just right? Found them. Yeah. Made I mean, a thing and found them. That's definitely uh, <laughs> something we all crave, I think. And it's kind of an impetus for our podcast a little bit, right? Just being able to talk to other to yeah. to each other and bring guests on and talk about the things that we love to do. So mm-hmm. and and yeah, I, I agree. Uh, social media, especially in the community, can be kind of a eh, sticky subject because there's a lot of, you know, thing about likes and followers and, and And what those, what those numbers mean to people. And I know, you know, there's a, I've, I'm friends with people that have, you know, been cosplaying. If we're going to talk about the cosplay world, um, longer than maybe social media has been around. And they're like, Oh, back Mm -hmm. in the day, we didn't have any of this and it didn't matter how many likes and stuff you have. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely it's not an easy subject to talk about, but I think it's an interesting one. So I, I think yeah. really, I think we both agree on that. So that's why this one's uh, going to kind of revolve around social media and, yeah. and art for art, for artists, for cosplayers, mm-hmm. um, for makers. For biz- artists that are making it for a business. business. Yeah. Yeah. And the value of the community as a whole. So there's definitely, it may, you may think like, gosh, this is going to be so gosh darn boring. I don't want to hear this feeling. Like, you, know, you know, we're not just going to sit around and talk about our pages and our numbers. We don't care. I mean, oh, I, I yeah. can tell you how many potatoes <laughs> I can mail out before I go broke to how many followers I have. Like, you know, there's <laughs> just an arbitrary number to me, but we're going to talk about what we think, uh, just what we've observed and, and uh, we all talk to our friends about these kind of things. Everybody talks about social media related things in their little circles because that's, that's that is our culture. Yeah, that's that is the culture, now. right? So yeah. let me see. What's what's a okay? Let's just start with this. What's a positive thing that you think it brings to the community? So I would say. Um, I overall, like the reason why I started mine, obviously, like I said, I needed to find a community. I I've learned a lot. There are so many uh, forums and like communities, sub communities on social media, like little um, groups of BlizzCon cosplay discussion, the Wood Whispers Guild, um, the Prop Tarts group, Fox Shop. There are so many subgroups with on social media that are great for finding information, but they're kind of just an extension or they're not an extension. They're another kind of forum, you know, set up. Yeah. But 
having um, the actual social media side of social media, like the, the reach part and likes part and pages and things, I'd say the value in having something like that is um, – it's just as, just the same as, as visiting a forum. You have an audience of people that like or respect your work or are fellow artists, and they can give you feedback or um, they can answer questions for you if you're lost on something. I'd say that um, the, the knowledge, the amount of knowledge you get, the more people that you reach and, and answer questions with, I think that's the value of social media. But that's not the business value. Yeah. Well, the, I say, yeah, that's definitely, there's like a community value and a business value, right? If you're, yeah. if you're just, if, if you're not trying to run a business, you're not trying to be, I hate the term, but a pro cosplayer or whatever you want to call it, um, where, <laughs> uh, or maybe it's just say a paid artist. Cause really a pro cosplayer <laughs> paid is, artist, just, yeah. is just a paid artist. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and you're trying to build a format for a business. That's a different thing than just, Hey, here's an easy place to reach me because I met you at a con and, yeah. and I'd like to keep in touch with you and follow the work that you do because, you know, mm-hmm. for whatever reason you met a certain person, you're like, this person's work is awesome. I want to keep in touch yeah. with what they're doing. I want to see work in progress photos and things. And mm-hmm. so I think that's definitely where it's been a bonus to the community, especially as, you know, I mean, I'm a few <laughs> years older than everybody else and internet forums are kind of stale now. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. Are, yeah. are you are you part of any forums? Any? Uh, I mean, I lurk a lot of forums, <clears throat> but like, I, do I participate? No, because they're not very nice. Most of the time. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, right? A lot of the forums have they're not constructive. Yeah, a lot of the forums can be kind of, <clears throat> um, yeah, not very nice, like you said. Yeah. Uh, but I find the community groups, like the social media groups, way better. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just the natural evolution of like something about that little like confined private, you know, not really private because anybody can join, but they have to find it. Those groups are just a little more grown up most of the time. Most of the time. I, I've been a few, yeah. a part of a few where I've left <laughs> because yeah. they weren't very yeah. grown up and they, and you find that anywhere, right? Because everybody's yeah, on there. I mean, I, it's just like everything else in this kind of community. Um, everybody's there for a different reason. Uh, for the most part, though, I would say that the things that I've participated in, most people are there to be helpful, you know, mm-hmm. and to share and to have their work seen, too. I think for me, one of the things I like about the fact that social media exists is it gives me a platform to share the stuff I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've been an artist for two decades, and whether it was woodworking or um, any, any other hobby I'm doing. And a lot of times, you know, back in the day I would build something and my family would see it and that was it, you know, and nobody in it, and it might be something I consider a pretty great piece of art that somebody might enjoy to see. And it just could get kind of buried in my house because nobody, there was no other platform to share it on. And so as, you know, as I started progressing in, you know, prop making and that community and stuff, just having a platform to share things as an artist, I think is a really great, powerful thing because you never know, um, what you share, whether, how somebody's going to react to it, how it might kind of change, change them or help them or in any of the kind of ways that people can react to a piece of art. Because in a lot of ways, I really feel like a lot of what we do, whether it's costuming or cosplaying, or prop building or, you know, traditional art or 3d art or, you know, or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that they want to see that art. They want to experience that piece. I mean, why do you go to museums to look at the art, you know, and, and it's not, it's, it's, I, I kind of feel like in some ways social media can be kind of the new museums, right? You're able to post something on a wall. Somebody can look at it and appreciate it, you know, for that couple seconds in their life. And, you know, if it makes their life better for that two seconds, well, I guess you did something good, right? Yeah, I, I completely I agree. And like, so it's it's always hard to talk about because it's it sounds narcissistic and kind of cringy. But if you just pull yourself out of that and just think about what it is for everybody, I feel like it's that for everybody, whether or not they want to admit it. Everybody wants to put their put their stuff out there and let people see what they're creating because you love it. You may yeah. be in your shop for, you know, 300 hours on a costume and then all of a sudden you're done and you bust it out and you want that reaction. You want people to to tell you that um they love this thing that you did or they, or they support this part of it or they want to learn how to do it or I, I love that uh, the inspiration. I love getting that. Like I would uh, I know how it feels to put it out there and I know what it feels like to be somebody that sees someone else's work and just just it's that mo- that shocking factor of, oh my gosh, I can't believe someone made that. Like, I love that feeling. And I think that 
social media is it's it's a powerful platform to have your artwork you know sent out to as many people as possible and the best thing is a lot of us our our network is so so large there's a huge community but we all kind of it's like six degrees of kevin bacon but six yeah, degrees yeah. of like so and so prop maker yeah, or yeah. cosplayer I, so, so who's the, some, I, I, that makes me wonder i'm sorry to who's you. the kevin bacon yeah it's like who's who's the kevin bacon of the uh... <laughs> Ooh, um, that one day we will. Well, they're kind of different communities, you. right? You kind of have the cosplay community, you kind of have the prop community, you know. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, there's it's somebody out there knows every, or is at least seven degrees away from them, I suppose. Absolutely. I don't think, I mean, I think that's completely true. Oh, like, I think so too. Absolutely. It's absolutely. probably even closer. So, it's probably more like four degrees or something. Yeah. So the community itself can be so powerful. So if if you are somebody like, um, say you're not necessarily a cosplayer or even, like, obviously we want to get into cosplaying and guesting and what we feel about that. But if you're an artist that's trying to make your living um, through commissions or prop making or um, costume design, special effects, all kinds of things, the best thing that, that um, I mean, the internet is so powerful in the way that you could post something and it could ping pong all over every wall of this community and end up. You know, like, have you seen the the mask that just went viral with, um, it's like Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton. This isn't political. Don't worry, guys. This is just the masks. They're the Flesh Works mask, I yeah. think, or something. Yeah. They, that's up to like 55 million views. Is it really? Yeah. It, it's been yes. on my feed and it's been on my Facebook feed in a couple, di- you know, a couple of different times. So it's definitely yeah. getting passed around. And so. love it or hate it. Like what a powerful thing. Like I saw my friend Alicia, um, she's like a fitness model and cosplayer. She posts, I saw her post on it. And I was like, gosh, everybody's seeing this. Like it's <laughs> blowing up. I mean, people you wouldn't realize it's in the eyes of everyone. And that, and all it takes is enough ping ponging before some some business sees it, or some some uh, company that needs that needs some costumes created from their game, or or they are hiring freelance costume designers for a sprite commercial or something. You never know who it's going to land in front of, and that's the power of social media. It can get you a job just because the community likes what you made so much. Your work gets in front of the right eyes. So. Yeah, that's very powerful. That's definitely true. Unfortunately, it's becoming harder and harder and harder for people's stuff to be seen because of the policies <laughs> of mostly I guess mostly we're talking about Facebook. I mean, it's it's the giant. Yes. It's the giant. It's the elephant in the room, right? I mean, it's the giant social media. I mean, pretty much as a business, and I think this is true just in any anywhere you go, it's like if you have some kind of small business and you're not on Facebook, you don't exist in, in some yeah. ways. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's just kind of like if I if I know if I learn about anything about somebody's business or whatever, they may not even have a website, but they're pretty much going to have a Facebook page. And really, Facebook pages have become kind of you know mini websites when it comes down to it. Yeah, um, especially but, because of all the different things you can do through Facebook now, like transactions and payments and storefronts. Yeah, and I mean, they really like, want. I mean, they. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. They, they want you to use it like a business. Yeah, they really yeah. do. And it's, you know, in some ways, I, so often I kind of think, man, I wish just everybody would just quit Facebook <laughs> so we yeah. could just be done with it and find another solution. Yeah, because, it's definitely a pain in the butt. Yeah, because, you know, the whole thing with, uh, and, and I'm sure you see a lot of this too, um, it, the whole reach thing, right? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody knows Facebook. They monetized things back in the day. It wasn't monetized. If somebody liked your page, they got every post that you posted. Everything was free and fun and people could see your stuff all the time. And then they monetized everything. And now basically, if you want your stuff seen by any amount of people, you know, Facebook is like, hey, you know, 10 bucks, hey, 20 bucks, you know, you can see this amount of people um, or this amount of people. And there's even like the see first option, but that doesn't even work all the time. I don't even know if I know what that is. I, yeah, so you can like star people. So they'll they'll pop up at the top of your feed and they'll be under see first. And I oh, have, yeah, I have, okay. Gotcha. For yeah, you viewing people other there. people's pages. Yeah. Yeah. I don't the, even, my best friend Liz, I don't even see her every time. Yeah. Like, I can't even believe that. Like, Facebook, I'm telling you, I need to see this woman first. <laughs> Let me see her. What is wrong with you? This is the person like, I the, want to see. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's so rude. Like, I don't know. It bothers me so much, like, that uh, there's so much value put into. Uh, into likes, how many likes you have, how many followers you have, because it's ever since that change, meh, you know, if, if you didn't get in before things really became like they are now, then you're really, I mean, numbers are numbers. It's not going to, it's not going to blow, you're not going to blow up like things were capable of back in the day, really. Yeah. Well, it, but, but an unfortunate thing is, is a, a lot of, um, even though that is true, mm-hmm. a, a lot of entities say like, you know, people that run a con, 
they they look at so if you're going to be a guest at a con they look at those numbers because they want the most bang for their buck right they want somebody they know is kind of an influencer on social media because if they're if they're paying for you to be at a con they want a return on their value as well. And one of the one of the things that I know a lot of the cons look at is how many Facebook likes do you have? How many people follow you on Instagram? Do you have a YouTube channel? How many subscribers do you have on your YouTube channel? Do you stream on Twitch? How often do you stream on Twitch? You know, because and it and and I get it because it's a business, right? And they want to maximize their value for their <laughs> dollar. But I think unfortunately if you weren't part of the great bonanza that was Facebook before it really got locked down, there's a lot of really great artists out there that their stuff really isn't being seen because it's being hidden by Facebook, but nobody else wants to use another platform. So in a way it's kind of a catch 22, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, And it's, it's, and a lot of like, we've talked about this earlier and um, a lot of people put value in their likes and like the amount of followers they have. And, that's fine. You you choose what you put value in in life, and I'm not going to tell you how to run your life. But up and coming cosplayers, there's a lot of young people um, that are starting pages. They'll go to a con and they'll see somebody else has someone will give them a business card and has their Facebook page on it. This yeah. is very common. I mean, I have stacks oh, yeah. of cards I've collected from people. Absolutely. And uh, they'll make a page and then they, they don't get any followers. They get maybe a hundred and a hundred can be amazing to one person, but the other person feels defeated because they see someone with with uh, three hundred thousand and they think, oh, that's so far away. Yeah. But it's again, they want to, maybe they want to be a guest at a convention and they, they realize like they're not going to be one unless they reach that certain number. And it, it's hard to tell someone because of the structure of, of the community and the value that is placed in it. And that's the reality. And that's not going to change. Um, it's hard to convince someone like, don't worry about your numbers. You know, like if you're not doing this as a business and you just want to like, you know, be a cosplayer and maybe do some guesting and like do it as a fun side thing. Um, it's okay. Like don't put, don't put so much weight in the fact that you don't have the same number as this, as this person. It doesn't say anything about your artwork. People just haven't seen it yet. You're still awesome. They just haven't seen you yet. It's okay. Yeah, that's very true. And it's, and it's easy for, you know, it's really easy to be like, yeah, likes don't matter. But I mean, I I think if everybody's honest, likes matter just a little bit, at least as far as when you, when you post something that you're very proud of and that you created and you put it out there and you get, a few likes or 10 likes or 20 likes or however many, I mean, that feels good. I'll admit it. When Mm -hmm. I, when I post stuff on my page, I I don't post it just because I want people to react that way. I post it because I want people to see what I'm doing because that's what I do. I'm an artist. I want my stuff to be out there. Mm -hmm. But when people do react in the positive, it, it feels great. It feels great to have people like your work and have that interaction and it's motivating. It, even it, it actually is very motivating. When I I find it extremely motivating. It, yeah, it, exactly. Um, I actually kind of stumbled onto posting stuff on Facebook way back when, and it was it was around the time. Well, it wasn't around the time. It was at the time when I built my first armor build, and and it was the costume for my daughter. Uh, she's King Loki, and it was a Warbo build, and it was the first build I ever did. That was a big build, and I just I kind of. I think I started a Facebook page just because some other cosplayers I knew had them and it just like, Oh yeah, maybe I'll just try that, you know? And I was working on that build way back in the day at late hours. And I was like posting some work in progress stuff. And, and there was literally people cheering me on. I'm like, Oh, it's only two weeks to go. And I have to build this Loki staff and I've never built one before. And here's the beginning of it, you know, and 20 people are like, Hey, you can do it, man. You can do it. You know, keep up the great work. We can't wait to see it at the con. And that was super motivating. It actually got me through a couple of really late nights <laughs> of like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this in time, you know, because yeah, I was new and I didn't really know what I was doing and I was behind and, and now I'm not new and I still don't know what I'm doing and I'm still behind on every build I do, but that's a whole nother story. So no, I, I agree. I think it's, <laughs> it definitely can, it's fueling. And, um, there's times that I post this, like, as I've been posting things, um, I I'll see people will really like something that I didn't expect. Like I'll post a sculpt and I'm view, I've, I've done so many foam and warbler things. That all of a sudden there's a sculpt in there and, the, and it blows up yeah. and I get so much great feedback on it. And, uh, it's like you forget that like, that makes me think, all right, I want to do a little bit more of that. Like not yeah. necessarily because did, I'm not doing it because other people like it. I'm doing it because I realize like that must be pretty good. They like it. It's like, all right. Yeah. Cause we're very critical and we're yeah, very, very like, so. eh, 
meant about our stuff a lot of times. So when you get that feedback, it gives you a little bit of a, um, almost like an old fashioned attaboy. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you just it, feel, you feel, you feel good. You feel good. And like, I, that's why it is, I, you know, it's that controversy of a lot of young teenagers, their parents are like, Oh, I don't want you on Facebook or Ooh, I don't want you to have a page. Like that's, it's very controversial, um, amongst young, young teens, but yeah. It, it, when it's good, it's good. And it can be a confidence builder if you could just make sure that it always is, you know, is positive. Yeah. And, and there's definitely that kind of, I guess, scary aspect of that where, mm-hmm. you know, there are a lot of really weird people out there. <laughs> I mean, it's just true. Mm-hmm. A- and we've all had, you know, I haven't so much because I'm a 40 year old <laughs> dude. So I don't get a lot of creepers on my, on my Facebook page. You know, I think, I've had maybe one <laughs> in the four years that my Facebook page has existed, but I do know there's a lot of young women that cosplay. Um, my daughters being two of them. My oldest daughter has a cosplay page. Um, Caitlin Jones cosplay, by the way, in case you want to check out her page. Um, and my youngest doesn't have Facebook page. Uh, she just uses Instagram. She doesn't want anything to do with Facebook. And, you know, even as a, even as a father and a, and, um, and a cosplayer, you know, even when, they started those, you know, one Instagram, one that, just talking about cosplay and stuff. It's it, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, you're kind of putting yourself out there and exposing yourself to the world. And there can be some creepy people out there. And I've seen so many litany of like just just disgusting posts of screenshot <laughs> screenshots that women that women that we both know. <laughs> That have mm-hmm. had just like the nastiest things said about them, you know, um, for whatever reason. And it's just like, uh, so there's always, you know, there is that kind of, you know, unfortunate gross part of the whole thing too. So I think it'd be a, a little remiss not to mention something about that. Um, yeah, just because, I mean, the, the whole page thing lends itself to, as a female, like that public page and just exposing yourself, it's going to happen, man. Yeah, like it, absolutely. It's, it's definitely, uh, it's unavoidable. I think that um, you, the content that you post can definitely help control that. But still, you know, but it's going to happen. Even still, if you I've had seen... one creeper, I'd love to find, I mean, like you tell me privately what that guy said, because that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, that's so funny it to was me. Like years, it was like years ago. I think it was like. <laughs> When I did my, when I finally put on my first costume for the first time, it was like when I was cronk or something. And it was just like, what are you even talking about? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so is that something that, is that, is that something that you've had much of an issue with as far as, um, <laughs> um, you know, people just kind of being nasty? I mean, not, no, not really. I mean, I, I get some, yes, but like yeah. I am. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm worthy of it. Like, that's so ridiculous. You know, like, I don't want to get those comments. So I'm not, no. inv- I'm not opening the invitation as like a challenge or like, Oh, I, I, I'm not hot enough to get those comments. That's ridiculous. I don't even think like that. Yeah. I do get some weird comments, but most of them are, you know, pretty harmless. I don't get a lot of bad ones. And yeah. I will say that like, um, it doesn't, I don't know that it has anything to do with the way that I post because I, I do sexy stuff sometimes, but I don't do overly sexy, but I, I, um, I just don't know that I'm exposed to that many people yet to like have those kind of crazy interactions, but I love the funny ones. Like the ones where like maybe English is in their first language and they've just butchered something they're trying to say. <laughs> like, those are of, my favorite. It's kind of an unintentional kind of thing. Yeah. Th- yeah. Those it's like, can all right, I'll let you have it. All right. You know, cause so, it's so ridiculous. Well, well, what about this too? Because, and, and I don't, please don't take this the wrong way, but you know, um, you're, you're, you consider yourself plus size, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so what about that kind of body shaming kind of thing? Is that, is that something that, that you've ever really experienced that much? Because I know some of that is out there and that can kind of be, you know, something that it's really detrimental to, especially to, to females, um, us guys too. We don't like our bodies being shamed either, but it, it seems to be less of an issue for us. I mean, is that, is that something you've ever had to deal with? Um, on top I mean, of it? okay. So like, it's so funny because guys do get it too, but like the guys, a lot of guys out there in the public, eye tend to make fun of themselves first. Like, uh, I yeah. listen to Ethan and Gila on H3, H3. I love them. And like, um, he always calls like his, his neck thing, like the FUPA and stuff. And he, <laughs> he beats everybody to the punch. So that's fine for me. I, I kind of agree. I kind of, um, I have that same mindset. Like you can, you can poke fun at me all day long. I, I know all my imperfections. I look at myself every day. I'm, I see myself naked in the mirror. You know, you know what I mean? Like, I know what I look like. And I, I love who I am. This is, this is what it is. And 
I am not very easily um, offended and like people don't really come at me in that way. I mean, you know, they will. People always do at some point in life, but it doesn't really bother me that much. But I do get very protective of other plus size people. I have so many plus size followers. I love you girls so much. Like I and the guys both. I love I love my plus size people just because of the the nice things they've said to me, the wonderful, yeah. like uplifting things like and, and we're a good support group for each other. Like, you know, we everybody wants to be healthy. Everybody wants to be their best form. And I'm not going to tell somebody how to live their life, but it's nice to have um, it's nice to encourage each other. And um, and I, I hate when someone else when I see someone come at someone that's like my friend or something. I have yeah. a couple plus size cosplayers that do have bigger followings. And whenever I see a comment. That's just, you know, just mean, just mean yeah. for the sake of mean, like, what yeah. the heck, man, like, you think what? this is why they, you know, it's pointless. It, it, it really accomplishes nothing to just, I mean, most of those girls have such rhino thick skin at this point that they don't care what you're saying, but you took the time out of your day to like be to mean. Just, to just kind of crap on somebody, right? Yeah. It just, like, how do you feel? Like, yeah, did that I, make you feel good? I can't believe that it really would make someone feel good to like make fun of someone that's like doing some kind of cool artistry and they happen to be a bigger girl and like, what dude, you're wa- that's so womp womp, you know, like <laughs> yeah. waste. Well, plus it's like, it's so, it's so like, yeah, we've never heard that before. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, that's how I feel. I'm like, it's oh, like, wow, man. it's like, really, it's, that's, that's really all you're going to do with your life, you know? So yeah, that kind of stuff. It, it, it definitely is. It's just, it's so, I don't know. I guess I was raised a different way. So. Me too. Yeah. And so like, that's why the keyboard typos, at least it's a refreshing roast. <laughs> it's like, all right, I see you, buddy. I see you. I see you slid your hand all over that keyboard. It must be really dirty, but we'll let it go. <laughs> refreshing so it's, roast. Um, uh, that might be, yeah. the podcast. that might be the title of this episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> but uh, speaking of, so with social media being, having the power that it does have, and we talked a little bit about, um, about, you know, uh, influencers and con guests and whatnot. And even like, Social media on uh, like Instagram, I, you and I both have friends that have larger followings and um, a lot of, you know, we all talk behind the scenes and I've talked to a lot of my friends about companies that have approached them, yeah. companies they've decided to work for or not work for just the companies that um, will come at them just sending them product and want pr- promotion and then some yeah, that pay. That's, that's a fairly big thing, right? Um, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. And, and a lot yeah. of companies are getting on more on board with that, realizing that there's yeah. some power behind um, you know, internet personalities, you mm-hmm. know, that I, I would say I would classify <laughs> both of us in that category. I, I think I'm very, very low tier, but you know, I, I do get, I do get some benefits of people sending me products if I'm willing to talk about them on, you know, whatever I'm working on or whatever. Yeah. So, and so that's definitely something that a lot of, a lot of companies <laughs> are really waking up to, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I I definitely think it's um it's becoming more and more mainstream. Like I, I'm I'm in the same tier as you. Like even us like baby following kind of people, um you know like maybe a dog food brand will come at me or something. Like somebody wants you to p- promote some stuff for them. Yeah. I mean it's it's different than that, but it's crazy that there are there's so many companies in the world and so many indie companies and small brands and um you know makeup lines or or uh third party costume like you know some of those overseas companies that will send it to customers to alter and oh, yeah. post about yeah. there's there's so many different companies that do that that um i think i think the young and up and coming cosplayers hear about that and they see that they see the promoted post and the and the um the the swapping stuff for promotion and they want that yeah. and so that is kind of what fuels that desire to have the likes and sometimes that tips them over into the edge of doing things that maybe um aren't so you know aren't as comfortable for them just to try to get the likes to try to get the stuff and to- it becomes this perpetual cycle so i think um i definitely think i love that companies do that because i think it's a great outlet and i I love asking a friend, like, what did you think of this product? Or even when I have a big old dome. And so when I go to buy a wig, I will talk to all my friends that have done lots of, you know, wig, uh, bought a lot of wigs or worked for a wig company. And then they'll give me advice on on uh, what brand is just the best and caters to my giant head. So I, I think it's nice to have the community trying lots of things. And I think um, when a company picks a really positive brand ambassador, it can do a lot for them. It really can. Yeah. And it's powerful. So Absolutely. I, uh, I definitely, I support it and I love, I, I would never get down on my friends for doing things like that, which happens a lot, which is another side effect. There are a lot of, um, 
Really? A lot of people in the yes. Oh, see that, see, this, that like get the, down on somebody for doing that. Right. So this is oh. a little bit of a difference. So Eric I guess, and I. Um, I guess I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> yeah. Although we come from the same community, we also are li- we have um, some different perspectives. Like some of my friends maybe do a little more promotional modeling and cosplaying. They're also your friends, but girls yeah. chat differently than guys chat. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And um. Men can be catty, just like girls can be catty, of course. But sometimes oh, you I can even read comments. So I mean, what, what what is that kind of state? No, I'm just. <laughs> You're so rude. Look how offended you are right now. Check your offense at the door. Yes, um, yes, the guys can. They be um just as... like I'll a friend of mine will get a product promotion, and this is how this person pays the bills. They yeah. are a promotional model. I don't care if you like them or don't like them. That's how yeah. they pay the bills. Get off of it. That's so mean. You know, like um. So they'll promote a product. And they'll get annihilated in the comments. People will be like, I didn't I didn't follow you so it could be advertising and stuff. And it's like, dude, well, wow. you know, like, all yeah. you got to do is just move on to the next. You know how fast it is to scroll? I can scroll yeah. so fast, guys. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> Competitive scrolling right here. Like, I got this. It's like, just so, go, so, just move on, move on. Nobody yeah, cares. On. It's like, if you don't like so, it, who cares? <laughs> yeah. And I am, I'm not somebody to ever knock someone for doing that because I, it's just not my MO. I don't, I don't care if you want to, um, you know, how, how you, uh, if product endorsement is your thing, do it. I don't care. So, yeah, I mean, I celebrities actually, do it all the time. It's not an uncommon thing in the world. I actually think it's a cool thing. I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah. but maybe that's just me. I haven't really thought about people getting flack for that though. Yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't, I mean, don't go dive it in the comments thing. Cause if you do, you'll see some of the flack, but it's not even worth even, even shedding light on those people's opinions yeah. because that's true. either positive or get out. That's right. So, That's right. Yeah. Make it a positive yeah. thing. So yeah, you positively attack someone for using ads. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think that, I think that, that, <laughs> that channel of being able to have people work with say, okay, so TNT cosplay supply, they're, they're, they're a good example, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they send me foam. I make stuff out of the foam. I post about it. That's it. I mean, that's yeah. it's as simple as that. And people say, hey, what kind of foam is that? And I say, it's TNT Cosplay Supply Foam. You should check it out. And they started, I mean, I started using their foam before they started sending it to me. So Same for me. You yeah. know, and it was just like, it was just a natural fit when it was like, hey, yeah, you'll send me foam and I just keep posting about it. Well, I already do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sure. I mean, that's just like, why wouldn't I want to do that? You know? And yeah. and I happen to really love their foam. I mean, if I didn't love their foam, I wouldn't use it and I wouldn't, I wouldn't like give shout outs to them every time I, I post, I'm working on something for them. So, but I guess, I I guess, you know, I just, maybe just, it's a night, uh, being a little naive about it all. I just never thought somebody would be like, why are you doing that? You know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah. And it's a product that like you, you and I both used it before we even got to know, uh, Tony and she's wonderful, but I, um, it's important, I think, if you are a brand ambassador, make sure you like the product, you trust the product. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. But, yeah. yeah, so I, I could get maybe if your following was getting a little sassy with you, if you were like just every single day throwing up all kinds of things, like as every as seen on TV product that just ain't working. Yeah, and just, I mean, you know, I would never do that, though, you know. You so might have been hacked like, if we start seeing that. Yeah, so, definitely, you know? definitely. But um, so. I like it's so funny because I've seen a lot of people in the uh, Instagram like beauty community and it's sort of crossover into the cosplay and like promotional cosplay model um, kind of scene where it's like this fit tea stuff. And like I recently, when I hit 10,000 followers, I had a, um, a like, I don't know, organic weight loss company that was yeah. like medicinal products that to contact me. And like, I am not promoting your weird weight loss stuff that I've never tried in my life and I'm not putting in my body. Like, exactly. It's, it's thank like you I... for thinking I need it and want me to push it on everyone, but I'll pass. <laughs> it's like, that's really, that's the first product endorsement I get. Like, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. So it's, uh, you know, I definitely think if you're going to, if, if a company approaches you, stand by the brand and make sure that uh, make sure it's something wholesome and good or, or represent you as a person. So, yeah. I don't yeah. I mean, I, I would hope that most people or anybody that would take on something <laughs> like that would actually, you know, want to use or, or likes using whatever the product is. Um, I, I actually have this kind of weird kind of maybe irrational fear of like somebody wanting me to, to support, you know, do that kind of thing and have me sent, have them send me whatever. And then like this weird, well, what if I don't like it? Then what do I do? Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, yeah. uh, huh. That because I would, if, 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 it, if that's the deal, Hey, use this thing and then post about it or whatever. And if I don't mm. like it, I mean, I don't want to trash a company that, you know, that's 
trying to work out something with me and I don't want to really speak ill of other things if it really is no consequence to me. So it's kind of like, do you just kind of pretend it didn't happen? Or, I mean, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> right? it didn't happen. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like, what it's like, I'm not going to go out of my way to, to like, you know, say bad things about a company or whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's just like, I don't know. Do you, have you ever had that weird thought go through your head? It's like, I don't know. I mean, just, yeah, maybe, definitely. Maybe I'm the only one that's just like. No, I, no. Just, like um, th- this happens a lot with ladies. And like, I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you gals that listen, or maybe not. I mean, maybe you dudes too also that listen are getting, um, you'll get like um, a makeup brush company or like a, um, you, I don't know. That that seems to be common. A lot of like lower um, or like random makeup brush companies that I, I've never heard of, they'll contact you and like they maybe won't pay you, but they'll send you something and they send you like a discount code. Yeah. And yeah. I am really picky about my makeup <clears throat> brushes. I'm talking like I am as shashy as can be about it. Wow, and man. I am not going to put some like I'm not going to, you know, stab my face all day with your brushes just because you sent them to me for free. <laughs> and I don't want to slam you. That's ter- I never want to be a brand slammer. Like, that's just not – I don't like that. I don't, I don't want to be negative if I don't have to be. So I'm the same as you. Like, I I, I appreciate the thought, but I, don't, I just don't know, you know. <laughs> so I would feel I, bad taking your product and then – you know, I had no idea there was a whole underworld of make, makeup brushes that oh my out gosh. there. Oh, so there I have you so go, many right? makeup brushes that are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I could have a whole other podcast about just just well, talking about well, just this talking is, about oh, this little makeup brush remember. tried. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. Um, so so speak, speaking about like getting paid for things and um, or getting uh, product endorsement, I know you and I both wanted to talk about how we feel about getting paid or not getting paid or giving your time to a convention. Oh yeah, what. <laughs> You read my mind because I was like, ah, this would be a great, great segue because I was just looking at the note here. Uh, See, well, I'm just, well done. I'm learning off you, Eric. Well done. Well done. <laughs> yes, Amazing. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. What were we talking about? <laughs> well, was, we were talking about how we we're talking about you <laughs> endorsing bad makeup brush brands and how I'm trying to get you off of that <laughs> deadly path. <laughs> I just had this image of you like poking yourself. <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> There's also like scrubbing makeup brushes too. There's just things. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, convention um, uh, appearances. Free yeah, or not free. Yeah, that's something that comes up every once in a while. And, and we mm-hmm. know several people. I mean, I've only done a couple. Um, so it's not, not like something I have a lot under my belt. But there definitely is an amount of need or want out there for you know cons to bring on people and and not pay them Mm -hmm. um obviously anytime you can have somebody work for you for free as a business that's you know a pretty good business decision right if somebody's willing to volunteer their time and you don't have to reimburse them (laughs) but is that the best thing for our community as a whole and i think the boat the you know i mean I don't really think it is. What, what, what's your thought about that whole thing? No, I think uh, the same way that we've all begun to set a precedent for commissions, I think that guest work is the same way. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to flame any con runners. I love conventions. We all do. I've been a guest at a lot of conventions, um, you know, local ones. And then I got to travel with a big company called Wizard World. And obviously, I have strong opinions about you know, what I think about guesting. And I will say that Disney pays their mascots unless you're doing an internship program or something. And I think they still paid internship probably. So I feel the same way. If you are, um, if you're entertaining a convention's uh, attendees and that's your job, you're, you're manning a table and you're, you're meet and greeting and you're talking to people. Like, I feel like that's a lot of work, especially if you're there eight hour, you're beginning to end of the convention. You're there for all three days or something, even a one day con. It's not exactly comfortable to me in a costume all day. Like, I try to make mine comfortable, and like, it's still a stretch. Yeah, even so, the com- even the comfortable ones aren't comfortable. They're yeah, just they're just more it's comfortable not- than the one that is less comfortable. Yeah, it's not like Justin Bieber jogging pants and stuff. Like, it's not <laughs> super comfortable. It's well, just, unless it's- you're unless you're cosplaying Justin Bieber in jogging pants. <sighs> yes, I should. I want to do that so bad. Brilliant, right? Brilliant. I mean, yeah. you can have that one for free. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, coming to a convention near you. <laughs> so I think um, th- there's been a great debate about this. And uh, I know that people, um, I feel like the community as a whole is kind of, has definitely evolved more towards um, cosplayers or makers getting paid for their appearances. And I'm glad for that because I think that it's, uh, I think 
if you if you're paying out of pocket to get to a con, someone sends you a, a request to be a guest, and you're a new cosplayer, and you think this is a great opportunity, and then they're like, but you have to get yourself there, and you have to buy your own hotel or you know pay for your own hotel. We'll give you a ticket though, but we want you to be our guest, and we want you to ho- host three panels. We want you to be at your table all three days. And then you've, you know, you're out of pocket $300, you're a new cosplayer, you're not selling merchandise, you're not selling pictures, because that's you're brand new. I feel like, obviously, it is the business model that, you know, they're getting something for free, like we said, and I'm not saying that that's, I'm not going to cast judgment on the con. But I do, I want to protect the, the up and comers wallet, you know, like, yeah. I'd hate to see somebody shell out a lot of thousands of dollars trying to build up some um, guest promotional appearance career. And you know, not really see a lot from it. Taking advantage of isn't the word. I don't want to use that phrase, but I I want people to be, um, you know, be repaid in some form for their work. And sometimes a table and a ticket or per diem or a hotel, like there's lots of just small parts that can make it up to somebody. You don't have to get paid a grand appearance fee, you know? Yeah. And I, and I even think it's fair to be, you know, for, Hey, we'll pay all, we'll pay for everything, but you know, an appearance fee, I, I guess that's, you know, uh, that's up to the individual person, but I mean, Mm -hmm. you're you're still, you're still giving your time and, and really with all of this stuff, whether you're appearing at cons or you're building commissions, uh, the time, right. Time is the one thing. I mean, you're going to hear me say that all the time on this podcast, um, that time is really your commodity when it comes down to it. And, and yeah, there's definitely a, a, a balance there of, um, you know, work, uh, I guess, I mean, essentially you're working for free, especially if you're expected to be there and run panels and have a booth and what have you. I mean, that's a lot of work. I mean, it's really a lot of work. Um, yeah, it's draining. I mean, it I, really I, is. I definitely, I can say from experience, I have been that cosplayer that yeah. was willing to do things for free and I gave it my all and like, and I don't look back and hate those cons for no. letting me do that. I wanted to do that. Yeah. But now as I've done it, I got it. I got it out of my system. I had a great time just, <laughs> you know, running around and loving on people. And now it's like, Ooh, time is commodity. You know, time is a commodity. Yeah. I could be sitting here sculpting, working on something that I could sell. So it's, I can't, I can't physic. I can't like open my wallet and go. I, I, I mean, I love to go to these cons and whatnot. And it's like, as you evolve as a creator and maybe it becomes a business, you have no choice but to make money. You, you keep your lights on that way. So you yeah. have to got to think about that. You're a person too. So, yeah, exactly. And, and at some point, it, and I got this way with, when I started with commission work, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you want to get your name out there. You want people to see your work. Um, you don't really have anything established to be, mm-hmm. Hey, because, you know, I have this body of work. You can look at my past practice and say, okay, based on that, this person is worth, this amount of money to create this thing because I can look at what they made in the past and have a reasonable guess that the thing they make now is going to be just as detailed and a a great piece as the other stuff. Therefore you're worth X amount of money. And when you don't have a body of work to share with that, it's like, where do you start? It's a catch 22, right? You have to get credit to, to, to have credit, but you can't get credit because you don't have credit, right? Everybody's experienced that at least once in their life when yeah. you first break out on your own and become your own person. And, you know, you can't get a loan because you have no credit, right? But you can't get credit because you don't have any credit to base your credit on. It's just like, you know, and it's kind of the same way in the it, with, with props or with any kind of commission work. I just said props because I do props. Um, and kind of the same way with, with appearing at cons too. It's like, you don't necessarily have a, what we'd call like a brand value, right? I I bring this value to this con, therefore I'm worth X amount of money in time because of that value I bring. And whether you can prove that you bring a brand value, you bring a value no matter what, whether you can prove it or not. You know, um, when my family... That's a great statement. That's so true. It's true. It really is. And so I think it's more of just a mentality of people just being willing to just understand that your your presence there is worth something. Um, And... Like for us as cosplayers in my family, we, we kind of think of that as we, we look at cons as we bring value to a con because people want to see costumes, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, imagine, imagine like a huge, 
a huge, you know, pop culture comic con with no cosplayers. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Right? I don't want to think I mean, that. I mean, wouldn't, that it, in my wouldn't, head. It, wouldn't it be kind of weird? <laughs> I, I just think it would be weird because there's a lot of value there that all of the cosplayers bring, whether you're paid to be there or not, you know. And so even even if you're not a guest, you bring value to a con. You bring value to the people that are there and that are milling around and want to take your picture. And how many little kids run up to you and just like, ah, oh, you're my favorite character or whatever, you know, and all the excitement. And it just, it I think, the cosplay community brings like a whole nother, um, uh, I can't think of the word, just kind of feeling to cons that wouldn't normally be there. So, yeah. And like the, and that, that brings up an interesting thought to me. So, um, a family that lives in the Midwest, for example, it's very expensive. It's quite a few thousand dollars to take a family of four down to Disneyland or Disney world. Yeah. Definitely. Both, all, both cons have paid decorative, beautiful costumed, lovely people that your kids want to meet and greet. Well, yeah. <laughs> say you can buy a $35 ticket for a weekend pass for two adults, you know, a 35 each and then kids get in for free and you get to go to a con and see people dressed up. Like yeah. what a value comparatively. <laughs> and say that con could afford three local cosplay guests that they pay a per diem, $50 per day, feed those, you know, $150 per cosplay guest. They feed those three beautiful cosplayers that are all dressed as kid friendly costumes. Like, dang, that family is going to get there. You know, they're going to get to meet these people. Us as cosplayers, you know how much we love entertaining those kids. Well, yeah. I don't know about some of, you, some of you guys don't like the tiny humans, but like, that's okay. That's you. <laughs> oh, man. Kids I are like my favorite part. <laughs> oh, they're my favorite part because they're, they, most of the time, you can trick them into believing that, you know, something, some fun magic's going on. But like, yeah. you, know, you always get this. Sometimes you get those kids, they're like, you are not what you say you are. Yeah, they're way, they're way, there's always one that's like way too cool for school, right? But I like, like them, but they're, they're like, just as fun. Not buying it. <laughs> Yeah. But it's like, and then you get to ask them, you know, like, what, what, all right, what could I do to make you, I need to convince the other kids. So like, tell me what I can do better, you know, and like, yeah. that'll let you know where you failed. Exactly. I like, I love the kid experience. And I think that, um, I definitely believe cosplayers bring a great thing to a con. Not all cons believe that there are, no, uh, no, not at all. And in fact, some kind of feel like they're sort of trying to kind of push <laughs> cosplaying out of the cons a little bit. And it's, yes. Really, and it kind of irritates me a bit. It irritates me so much. You have no idea because my state is really bad about it. Yeah. Like a uh, North Carolina overhaul, overhaul, the, what overhaul. I don't know why I'm trying to make that the word <laughs> overall. Um, my state, uh, we have one really big con heroes con, uh, and that's a comic booky con. It's not yeah. really that big, um, of a cosplay con. They have had some guests over the years, but like they kind of like to, um, um, I'd say the community in, Overall, in North Carolina is um, pretty purist. Like, there's Con Carolinas and stuff. They love cosplay. Yeah. They have great workshop panels. Um, oh my gosh, some really. I mean, that's a whole nother ballpark. But there are definitely, and that's in the same city as Heroes Con. But Heroes Con, same location, not same mentality. And that's that. That is definitely. Um, they're they're allowed to to think what they want to think. But you know, that's not my con. I like to. I like cosplay con. Of all cons, all the cons that are cosplay con, I like those. Like, I like comic books just as, just the same. I, I want them to be able to live in the same world. Like, why not, guys? Come on. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever been to any of the PAX cons? You ever been? To yes, PAX? I went to PAX East. Okay. Um, how'd you? What, what was your feeling of the vibe of costuming at PAX? Okay, so like that's those are not costume cons either. But I was a um, I worked with Banner Saga. Uh, um, or I worked with a company that makes Banner Saga and we, um, I was dressed as a dredge from their game and Liz was also dressed as a character from their game. So like we were decorating a gaming booth and like, that was fun. It was fun to like, people were interested and they took pictures with you and stuff, but it's not at all the same as a comic con, not even remotely the same. Like I didn't get the same vibe. So. Oh, PAX. Yeah. Yeah. PAX really isn't. Um, it's interesting though, because I have so many friends that get so excited, you know, cosplay friends that are so excited for PAX and go cosplay at PAX. And I'm just like, Hmm, I've been to PAX in in costume and it's just not the same vibe. I, it, it just feel like it isn't necessarily, um, well, it's like the people that go to PAX, they're there to check out new games and play games and stuff. And you're just kind of in the periphery and it's, it's just Mm -hmm. a little, it's just, it's just interesting. Um, yeah, I wouldn't I wasn't recommend sure. it if you're like a brand new cosplayer. I wouldn't go to, I wouldn't be like, oh, there's a local con. I'm in Boston and PAX East is here. I'm going to make that my first con. Like, you're going to be, it's very crowded. Yeah. You're, 
your costume is going to have to squeeze through like a very small thing. Um, they're definitely there for gaming. They're gamers. You're you're going to see cosplay there and they're decorative cosplay. Like comp- that's the PAX events companies usually hire. Like that's very often that you'll see companies hiring people to create characters from their games to, you know, rep the booth, to draw to people rep, in. It's yeah, like, to rep actually, to bring people in. Yeah, so it's advertising style. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Um and I'm not saying people shouldn't cosplay at PAX because I've cosplayed at PAX. So it's, but it's just, I just wasn't sure if that was um, just a thing with our PAX in general, or if just PAX that was that way, just around the country since, since the other PAX, you know, uh, East and is it, so, all right. East and South. Is that what Prime, it's called? South and East. Well, it used to be is called Prime, but they changed it to West. So, oh, West, because, yeah, but yeah. the other two, you know, they're fairly new. I mean, it's only been a couple of years since the other two have been around or three or four years, maybe. Right. I mean, Prime has been there for 10 or 15 years or something, but, oh, wow. Okay. But the other two, they just kind of added within the last five years, I want to say at least. So okay. I believe I you, but PAX East is so big. I couldn't be- like, that's crazy. That just proves that they really wanted to pack. Like they knew a PAX East was going to be successful. Yeah. Well, Cause it, it, started, it started with PAX with, with PAX prime. It was like, you know, right. and then at some point they added East and then I think South just got added only like two years ago or something. It it's mm. really hasn't been that long. Um, but I, I recommend those cons though, aside from like, even if you're not cosplaying, like I had, so I want to go back to PAX East because I love gaming and like, it's pretty fun. Yeah. If you love gaming, PAX is, is a great con. I mean, it's, it's a fun time. It's not necessarily the best cosplay con. And there are, again, there are people that cosplay and that's mm-hmm. always cool and fun. Uh, but just in general, if you're a gamer at all, and you've never been to PAX, you should get, you should try to go at least once if you can get tickets. Cause it sells out like, yeah. or passes i mean it just sells out in like what three minutes or some craziness so um almost as bad as well is blood is con worse or i don't know like i'm so sad i was in san diego comic-con and blizzcon queues at the same time like because they overlapped this last saturday i missed the first one it was really fast for blizzcon got in the second one didn't get um didn't get san diego comic-con takes i was just you know like it just wasn't my day all those big cons are just like ah (laughs) there's so many tickets for sale online right now though which they they just ask so much money for there's so much i'm just gonna i i wait until it gets closer i already have my hotel and everything so i'm i'm going to blizzcon yeah if i have to if i have to get um construction paper and draw a ticket and beg (laughs) like look look at how much effort i made into making this ticket guys i didn't even print one out i drew it so I, i'll um you know it is what it is we'll see we'll hope that somebody has an extra one as it gets closer so were you were, i can't remember were you at WonderCon? no i wasn't okay did you see how they had set up um all the gate the gates at WonderCon and stuff yeah yeah i did and that was like a lot of people were freaking out about it because they couldn't get close yeah well because in the past that big fountain has always been public access and then they put the gates further out so that people are there that are just there ghosting you know because that happens because people can't get passes it's not that people don't want to buy passes it's just people can't get them and that's kind of a big cosplay area so used to be you know even if you didn't have a pass you could go be in costume hang out at the fountain area which is a really cool area. That whole area right there is really neat. I love the Anaheim Convention Center area. I'm just hoping that they don't do that for BlizzCon. So Well, I know that um, – so the BlizzCon Cosplay Discussion Group is really handy for hearing what's going to go on with BlizzCon um, yeah. because Alex is a part of it, and she lets everybody know. So they – Blizzard is actually going to take over the group cosplay thing this year, the group cosplay photo. Oh, you know, really? that's usually oh they're going to the make it like official kind of thing. Yeah, oh, I thought cool. it was really cool because Kristen uh, Stump, you know, uh, the chromie cosplayer. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know Kristen. Yeah, so yeah, she usually her. helps uh, put it together, and uh, she can't this year. She's stepping down from it because I guess it's it's a big or it's like a big orchestrated situation. Oh yeah, I'm sure, it's massive and it's like overflowing. So yeah. I think it's really cool that Blizzard is like they are really really embracing their cosplayers like i kind of yeah. just want to lo- I, I didn't think i could love that company anymore yeah and i have a lot of I, you know and, and it's funny because i just really wasn't even a much of a blizzard person before i went to blizzcon <laughs> last year and and i just have to say that that company just the the way they treat their fans and their, mm. their fan base is just incredible you know um and <laughs> And I think every company should look at the way they treat their fans because they're, they're amazing. And now that you mentioned, you know, as good of a company as they are, I, I can't see them doing that whole thing of kind of closing that off and keeping other people out. Um, yeah, I wonder. 
I'd mm-hmm. be surprised if they did that. I mean, I'd be surprised just because the fountain's so iconic and like they're going to want people to take pictures. I don't know, though. I mean, you well, know, yeah. I don't know anything about organizing a con as far as like to that scale goes. So yeah, I, I don't either. That's a massive con. I just was blown away by the amount of people and the size of it and everything that Blizzard puts out there. It's just like. But the weird thing about BlizzCon is it, it's large and small at the same time. You yeah, feel really like you pass, all, you keep passing your friends, you see your friends yeah. gaming, and the lights are low. It's It yeah. feels like a gaming experience. Like, ooh, it gives me chills just thinking about it, know, y'all. Right? Like, I'm diehard about some BlizzCon. I, I plan on going back this year, so um, I'm yeah. looking, I'm really, really looking forward to it again because it was it, – it, other than, you know, uh, as far as cons that I attend on my own, you know, minus my family because that's kind of a separate thing for me, um, it's definitely my favorite con that I've ever been to was yeah. and it's a great cosplay con like yeah. one of oh, yeah. the tippy top yeah. because the the craftsmanship like the the love for the game has inspired this collection of people of diehard people to just like literally try their hardest to create the most the craziest masterpieces i mean these are masterpieces yeah. some of these absolutely. costumes absolutely absolutely like, they're ooh, the, 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 the the, and that's all I did. I mean, for two days, all I did was I wasn't even there in costume. I just ran around, met everybody I know, um, live streamed a bunch of stuff. I was a, a guest handler for like five different people and <laughs> just relished in the glow of all these amazing creators just showing off their work. And that was just incredible, you know. So yeah. uh, speaking of live streaming, have you ever um, and, you know, since this whole thing started out as a social media kind of thing, have you ever I, I don't I don't recall. Have Do you do any live streaming ever? I mean, I like stream twice on Twitch. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I thought I would stream, but I talk to people so much that like I don't, I don't really get that much done. Oh, um, <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, like too. oh, but it's weird because I Skype with my girlfriends and we'll, we'll sit here and craft, and yeah. I'm so productive. Yeah. But it, but the nice thing about Skyping with your girlfriends is like I could wander off upstairs and not yeah, come back for yeah, 15, they, 15 minutes. They don't care. Your stream cares. Yeah, it's convert. It's just like it's friend conversational. It's not like pay yeah. attention to a chat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely true. Um, streaming mm-hmm. can definitely slow down the build process of things. So mm-hmm. I have to, and I even haven't streamed in quite a while. It's been a while since I've been on Twitch um, because I, I have, I always kind of look for very specific things that I'm working on before I'm streaming uh, just, just to mm-hmm. kind of make it flow easier and easier to, uh, you know, things I can't really have to pay attention to. I really can't stream when I'm working on it, you know? Yeah. So things that I'm a little more comfortable with not having to have as much attention to, then maybe I'll stream that or whatever. So, yeah. So that is, that is, you know, another nice thing about, uh, social media is there all, there is all these ways to stream now, especially with, uh, Instagram and Facebook having their own streaming, um, you know, it's not maybe as easy as a forum as it is to do something like on Twitch because you don't have like the integrated chat. Oh, you do. You kind of do. Well, but yeah. It's, on not Facebook. The, it's not the same structure, but um, yeah, um, it's a little more free form or something, I guess. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I guess, you know, as a whole, there are, you know, uh, I get, there are a lot of ways to get your work out there, even though, um, you know, the, the kind of algorithms that are, keeping people from actually seeing posts and stuff are sort of holding people back. So, so maybe the best advice is, is like, you know, if you have that and people aren't seeing your work, don't be discouraged and, you know, just kind of continue to post things. I think that's the thing that's been most successful for me for, you know, for core geek, my uh, core geek creations, my, my part-time business or whatever you want to call it is that, you know, con- consistently posting and interacting with people definitely is a way of getting, making sure your things are being seen. Um, is, yeah. is there anything that you do that you think that people that helps with the response of things or um, anything like that? I'd, I'd say like, um, I don't know. There's a lot of like, I'm not a big, like, I don't, I don't post you a lot of like YouTube videos. So I don't know a lot about like click baiting people into yeah. clicking things <laughs> or like, or how to draw people in. I feel like just, um, <sighs> knowing what your audience likes and, um, and asking for feedback is a great way. So like if you just post something and you don't want any feedback, like you may get it, you may not, people may pass over it. But if you want to talk to the people that are supporting you and following you, ask them, don't be afraid to talk to people. Like, you know, these people are liking your page for a reason. They're not going to bite back. So I say it's definitely, I love to ask people what they think about something or just be like, yeah, well, can I see your dogs today? Yeah. Like, I just want to see your dogs. Can you post your dog, please, in the comments? Like, I love seeing people's dogs. I've had people post hamsters, gerbils, um, some weird little monkey looking thing. And I don't know what it is. It's like, monkey you know, looking I, thing. Well, it's just y- y- the people that support you, it's just nice to uh, to communicate with them. And th- other things that can help your um, 
like I have to do a giveaway sometime soon. I, I've been so distracted that I haven't finished like even setting, like typing all the, the wordage up just to just share it. But I think um, giveaways are, are good ways to you know give back to the people that support you, that give you feedback, that help you improve. Um, so if you are looking to maybe expand in a positive way, that's a good route to go. Like Yikes. little tiny giveaways and not, you know, don't break the bank, but a roll of foam. You know how great that is? I, you know, I love a roll of foam. Ordering yeah. one. As soon as I get off this call, <laughs> I, I've done giveaways, and it, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm you kind of reminded me that I, I need to. I, I feel like I'm, it's about time for me to do a, another giveaway one of these days, so I, I think I need to get prepared for that. So, yeah, um, yeah, because again, it's like I, I don't do a giveaway because you know it's like hey, I, I'm you know buying likes or something, mm -hmm. um, but I, I do like to acknowledge that there's people out there that follow my work and consistently like the things that I post and have uh, uh, constructive comments when I post and mm -hmm. you get that kind of dialogue through the social media. Um, and, and so it's just, sometimes it's nice to just say, Hey, I know you guys are out there. Thank you very much for being out there. Yeah. And as a way of saying, thank you is I can do this little giveaway and you get to have something that I make. Cause usually I give away something, you know, one of the props, if it's a, you know, whatever my newest resin piece is that I might be selling, I'll usually give that away, you know? So, um, and it, and it's another way that you can kind of reciprocate and then hopefully, you know, people want to share that too. Um, yeah. Or it's really just a great way to get a lot of people's, you know, uh, physical home addresses and just, you know, if you're, if you're a serial spyer that like I am, I'll just come visit you and thank you for your address. I, I'm going to hand deliver this foam roll and sniff it a month before I give it to you. Oh, wow. No, I'm just kidding. But it's, uh, you know, I like it. I love the personal, that it, it becomes personal and I really yeah. enjoy that. Even if it's just a small little giveaway, people appreciate it and it's really I love that little personal interaction. I think it's fun because there's so many, there's, the community is so large and small at the same time that, you know, you, you may never meet everyone in person, but you can find them through, you know, having to communicate with them to mail them something. I had a friend. I made a friend that was my follower after that. And um, we went to Wizard World New Orleans together. We went out to dinner. I love her. She just had twins. Like, you know, you never know. You never know where your, where your friendships will come from. Well, that's true. And in fact, uh, you and I met on social media. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. And look uh, at where we are now. We're best friends. Right. BFF forever. We're like forever. Rob and Big. We're like Bob and Biggie. A lot of bigs here. I don't know. I'm the big one. <laughs> Wait, Tupac and Biggie, that's not a good example. Why did I cite that? Rob and Big, Tupac and Biggie, not similar. <laughs> where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? How about, yeah. how about R2-D2 and C-3PO? There you go. That's Hated each other in real life. <laughs> I don't know, guys. We're just like, we could just name them all off and find reasons why. We're going to have to be our own. Han and, you know? like, and oh, Chewie. <laughs> I'm just Who? Going for all, Han and Chewie. I'm just going for all the Star Wars. Oh, Ren and Stimpy. Were they friends? <laughs> Ren and Stimpy. I think they I mean, were. Okay. That'll work. <laughs> we'll just go with Ren and Stimpy for now. <laughs> okay. I haven't seen that in so long. Chuck, Chucky and um, Tommy. Rugrats. Oh, Rugrats. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. Wow. Rugrats. That's, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, so. it's so Nickelodeon has an old um, cartoon show. Since we're probably getting to a wrapping up point, I'm just gonna throw this. Yeah, we fun are. Fact we're kind of wrapping up here. <laughs> yeah, Nickelodeon has a, a like a '90s cartoon channel now. That's like so cool. It has really? you know Hey Arnold, Rugrats. Um, uh, it has other shows too, like Salute Your Shorts or something. I can't remember what that was. It's That's got fun funny. stuff. Uh, Netflix now <laughs> just has uh, the real Ghostbusters, all five seasons of it. So have you ever seen that? The no, ghost, I don't think so. The, ghost, the Ghostbusters cartoon from the '90s. Oh yes, I have seen that. Yeah, I I can't believe I forgot about that. It, yeah, it's, wow. it's wonderful in its own cheesy way. So I like that. I'm gonna have to rewatch it. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I haven't seen it in a really long time, but I'll definitely rewatch it here soon. Well, some so. things from the past are really good, like the Batman animated series. Probably oh yeah, one of my favorite cartoon oh, series. I, I okay, I watched that when it was like actually on, like you know, yeah, way, way back in the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. That was I was really excited. That was, and that still holds true that it's a pretty good cartoon series. So. Yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen any of it in a long time, but I'm sure it holds up well because it was it was really well done when it when it came out. So yeah, yes, <clears throat> yeah. Back when I actually you know had appointment TV and actually waited, couldn't wait for a show to show up. I know? love how you call it appointment TV. Yeah, like appointment what is TV. that? I've never heard that. I have TV. I've never not had TV. And you are the first person to ever tell me about appointment TV. Appointment TV. You you have to make an appointment to see the show, right? Oh my gosh! But they have on demand and stuff, and like DVR, you can record. Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. So I don't do appointment yeah, TV. Sure. I just I just stream everything. I mean, it's pretty expensive. It, there's a difference. Like, it's like I watch it when I want to watch it. I don't make an appointment to watch it. Appointment TV. 
Oh, okay, okay. Make All sense? right. I'll let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, you know. we chatted about things that involve, um, you know, super fun stuff like Ren and Thimpy and Batman. Oh, wait, never mind. We talked about social media, didn't we, after that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, it feels like an hour ago or something. <laughs> it, yeah, I, it, it went by pretty quick for me. So I, I guess I guess it was an okay topic. So um, Yeah. Maybe hopefully, it was. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. You guys will tell us if it yeah, wasn't. And hopefully, like, that we, is hopefully we had some insight there. Um, it, like I said, it's not you know it's not like the easiest thing to talk about, but definitely an interesting thing, and definitely that's part of the community um, that maybe doesn't get talked about very much. So yeah. Okay. Well, and we were able to talk about it without fighting. Yeah. All right. Whoa, that's, put we're gonna go fight now. Though we, I was really <laughs> mad the whole time he was talking, and so I'm just like I'm puffed up so big right now. If you could see me, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get him. I'm Stop just kidding. It. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay. thanks for listening, guys. Thanks, everybody. Uh, feel free to check out our Facebook page. Uh, the podcast is at <laughs> – <laughs> I'm trying to wrap it up. I'm tired now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's where, at, what is uh, our podcast? craftinggeek.com. Craftinggeek.com. Yeah. And I guess that's it. So – uh, thanks, thanks again to all our listeners. And if you have any, if you have any questions, we're definitely going to be answering questions on the podcast. So if you have any questions that you want answered, um, feel free to leave those in the notes on the show because there's on the website you can there's a message board there you can leave it on Facebook. We have a grown up document and we're going to put them in there and then yes, we're going to pluck do. them out and answer yes, them. We do. We have maybe 13% of a plan, so it's growing. Dude, I don't know. Well, we still haven't figured out how to wrap up this dang thing yet. Like, we're just like, <laughs> blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay. If you made it this far, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll try Thanks, to figure guys. out a way to end episodes much more efficient in the future. You hang up first. <laughs> no, you hang up. <laughs> no, you hang up. Bye. Oh, wow. See you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>